All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy to have you on. We're just getting set up here. Thank you for joining us for our Women's History Month event. Okay, this is a little bit different than what we were hoping to be doing, but we're here and we're happy. We are going to be running events every single Friday at 5.30. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. And this week, we are kicking it off with our OGs in the wine industry. These are our women winemakers who have been in it. They've seen it grow. And uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the nitty gritty of being a woman in the wine industry, where we think this... <laughs> It's okay, you can laugh. Where we think that this industry is heading and... Um, we're just gonna tell some stories and drink some wine together. So let's get our introductions in line. Karen, would you like to kick us off? Sure, of course. Uh, I'm Karen Steinwalks. I'm the winemaker at Buttonwood Farm Winery, which is um, outside of the city of, between Salve and Los Olivos here in the Los Olivos district. I worked with Kathy. She was one of my mentors and um, I'm thrilled to also be able to be alongside both Denise and Denise was really truly a trailblazer here and Tara who back in the day when we used to be able to do live events we always seem to be next to each other and I miss you. <laughs> I know I miss you too. I miss everyone. <laughs> Great. Uh, Kathy you want to give us a little hi? A little intro? Sure. Um, I'm Kathy Joseph, uh, owner and winemaker of Fiddlehead Cellars and Fiddlesticks Vineyard. Um, I started the company back in 1989, um, really to come to Santa Barbara to reap the glory of what um, the environment, the soils um, can do for Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir. And I'm pushing the limit now with um, having planted Gruner Veltliner and trying to excite the world um, about what we can do here with that as well. Um, this is just such a great time to kind of share the vision of the place where we work, but also the camaraderie in our um, locale, our Santa Barbara County is, is unique. It is a bunch of trailblazers where it's a, um, a bunch of talented winemakers everyone with a different mission. And we we kind of um, have great honesty about uh, what we're about. And we like to share that and be personable. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great place to visit because of, of the wealth of, of um, great wines that we have to share. Heck yeah. Awesome, thank you. And Denise. I'm Denise Shirtless. And I am currently the general manager of Cambria and Byron Wineries. Um, started working here at Cambria in 1999. Time flies. Um, and at that time, um, I was hired as a winemaker and uh, moved into the general manager's position in 2017. And I'm proud to say that we have a winemaking team staff that is um, all women. And uh, you know, it's interesting being a member of Jackson Family Wines, our parent company. Um, I was looking at some stats yesterday and our company, um, or throughout our company, we have over 40% of our winemakers are women. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Santa Barbara County stats are high with female winemakers, but also Jackson Family Wines. So um, I think that has a lot uh, to do with our ownership. Our owner is Barbara Banky, very powerful woman, um, very confident, very strong woman. And so, you know, she's an inspiration to us here at Cambria. But um, I just feel honored to be a part of this group right now because I respect these three women um, tremendously. And they're feisty, they're strong, and nobody pushes them around and that's awesome who these these ladies are yeah. you sure <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> absolutely i have to agree tara take it away 
Yes, hi, my name is Tara Gomez. Uh, I'm the winemaker for Kita Wines. Uh, I started here in the industry in 1997, uh, worked at Fast Parker Winery and then up at J. Lore and Two Harvest in Spain and brought me back here in 2010 um, to start up Kita Wines. Um, and so uh, I've been here with Kita since 2010 and um, loving every minute of it. I mean, just uh, as everyone said, the camaraderie of, of just all these lovely women and, and uh, the younger generation who is uh, now coming into the wine industry. I mean, I know when I first started in the industry and graduated out of the knowledge program, there was only two, two women out of 10 um, that graduated and to, to see it now um, with so much more women in the industry is truly amazing. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, so a little bit for like reasoning why we're here. We all know that this is, uh, we started this because it's Women's History Month and normally we would have a big event this month in person and we're going on. I don't think you guys did it last year either, right? So this we is- did. Was, oh, We did. It was so the last, just before. last event, yeah. Okay, so here we are virtually. I think everybody's used to this format by now. Um, but a little bit of history, you know, women's, women's history has been celebrated for several decades at this point. Um, and it became like a whole month kind of celebration back in the 80s, okay? Um, our first woman winemaker was back in the 70s. So we do have quite some time in this space, right? But there's still a lot of growth to be going. So we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about that. Um, how? Let's see. What does this holiday like? What celebrating this? What does it mean to all of you? Like, what what do you really connect with? Like. You know, this this is basically designed so that we celebrate the accomplishments of women in American everything, right? All industries. What does it really like um, signify for you, Karen? You want to take this? Sure. Uh, so March eighth is when we used to do this uh, really fantastic event, and it was um, it was something that came about um, because I, you know, I come from. I come from the tech industry and that was pretty male dominated. And so was, I guess I was kind of used to it and didn't really feel a, a need to like, you know, as you say, pull that card. But um, I listened to this speech on the, uh, you know, one of those Oscars or global things or whatever. Is it good? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the plug. Um, and it was Patricia Arquette and she was like, she got up there to accept her award and she was just like, you know, talking about women and, pay and equality and things like that. And I thought, well, heck, we've got so many women winemakers here in Santa Barbara County. Why don't we do something? So Sonia and I put together just a little informal tasting at her place in Los Alamos. And then it, it we decided that we should you know, bring in our, our, um, our fellow chefs who are women in the Valley and our fellow women sommeliers, et cetera, and event planners. And it kind of got bigger. So that's what we did. And that was always a benefit um, with all the proceeds and most, I mean, all the wine and time for the winemakers was donated. All the, the women chefs time was donated. Most of the food was. So we've been able to raise a lot of money over the years for um, a couple of charitable organizations. So I, um, as far as that, that's March 8th. So that's International Women's Day. And that kind of came out of something I believe has started in Italy. And it would be a time too when women gave each other a, um, a sprig of mimosa, which is that, you know, a yellow flower that um, blooms right now a lot of pollen, um, and it was just kind of an act of friendship as well. And it had also to do with a little bit of the, uh, the labor movement for uh, equal pay. And that was a long, long time ago that that started. But here, here at Santa Barbara County, I mean, like not to put our, our male colleagues down at all because they're wonderful as well, but <laughs> <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing so wonderful as like, you know, if, because I still think I'm a new winemaker, right? I've been doing this since 2001, but I'm like, you know, I don't know everything. I don't have a science background like these three ladies do. So 
when I run into something weird, I just pick up the phone and call them. So I don't know if that happens in other wine regions. I know it wouldn't have happened in the tech industry. Uh, and I think it's pretty wonderful. But I do have to say that as much as I enjoy these every month, every March, hopefully in my lifetime, we won't need to call this out, right? We will, we will just be winemakers and not a segment of such. Right. Kathy, would you like to, you were, you prompted this question. Would you like to add on to that? Uh, of course. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know, I'm the old lady in the crowd. I, I started way back when, and, um, and uh, I couldn't allow myself um, to um, worry about gender to achieve my ambition and my passion and my goals. And, um, and, and I kind of just forged ahead, not knowing that that mattered or made a difference. I didn't allow it to, to come into play. And I had a, a, a tremendous mentor, Zelma Long, who kind of wowed the wine industry with her um, articulateness and her, her, her purpose in being a winemaker and, and connecting viticulture with winemaking. And to be in, around someone like that who taught me how to taste wine. And um, I, um, I think sky's the limit. You know, you, you just... Um, proceed. That, that, that's how I approached it. But here in Santa Barbara County, um, it's, it's a collection of independent thinkers. And um, I think it's um, uh, winemakers who, who aren't necessarily followers because someone did it that way. They have a mission. And it's a collection of women who are particularly sharing. And um, um, uh, it's, it's amazing to want to um, open the door to a great retailer that would be interested in all of our wines or, um, uh, you know, connection to a consumer who's interested in something that someone else is doing. I, um, the camaraderie is very strong here. And um, I think part of it is because um, uh, the number of women winemakers we have in the area who um, that's very easy to do. And, um, you know, I always felt that anything I could share with someone, I want to um, be part of that e education and growth in personal career development. So I learn every day, not only because I need to learn every day, but because of the people around me. And I think um, that culture exists big time in, in Santa Barbara County. Heck yeah, love that. Um, Tara, I would love to hear about your experience as a woman in this field. Sure, yeah. Well, um, I mean, so I came in from Paso Robles. Um, and so back into Santa Barbara County. Um, and um, when I first came back, like, yeah, I didn't really know anyone. <laughs> um, and so it was a little bit tougher for me. I had no one to bounce ideas off of or anything like that. So as Kathy said, you know, I just forged myself forward. And, um, you know, it, it, it just through time, it, I was able to gain um, my inner strength and believing in myself and, I mean, like I had a chemistry background, so like I knew that part of it, but um, it, it took a couple of years or uh, a little bit of time to get to know everybody else, like these lovely ladies. And and it was through, um, I remember that, that first um, get together that we had, Karen, I actually just came across those pictures uh, just last night um, from that first tasting at, at Casa du Metz. And, um, I met a, we met a, a whole lot of women and, and women winemakers and, um, you know, we would have like monthly um, get togethers back in the days and, and have tastings and just sharing ideas. But, but before that and, and before I met everyone, yeah, it was, it was a little tough. And um, 
uh, yeah, I was always getting questioned a lot. And, um, and so with that being said, um, yeah, <laughs> it was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and you know, I just, I was just waiting for that day to be invited to the same table as everyone else. And, uh, <laughs> and so it, it you know, it, it finally happened. And, and I'm just so grateful to get to know these, all of these ladies in the wine industry. Yeah, it's it seems like in your career time, like in, in general amongst all of you, there has been just a drastic shift, right? Just a huge shift. Um, Denise, would you like to speak to that? Um, you mentioned uh, kind of your, or you've uh, shared a little bit with us privately about your experience in the industry, it's been a little bit different, um, but maybe you've seen that shift a little bit, you know, as a whole. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, when I first uh, got employed in the wine industry, it was in 1983 after I graduated from Cal Poly and uh, I needed a job and I liked wine. And so anyways, um, I was working in a tasting room in San Luis Obispo and the winery had been sold to another um, company. They brought in a new winemaker um, and uh, the current lab tech was leaving. She was going to design school, fashion design school. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Sleep. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, because I was working in the tasting room, I needed a job, I had a science background, I applied for the lab tech position. So anyways, the new winemaker did not want to hire a girl, as he put it. <laughs> and I mean, and I didn't have a you know an enology degree. I had a degree in uh, nutrition and you know food science and whatever. Um, so it was tough. I had to talk my way into the job. I don't know how I did it. I don't know why he hired me. He did, but you know, once I was hired, I knew I had to prove myself. And honestly, everybody that I worked with was great, you know, and it was all men except for one other woman. Um, but nobody questioned, you know, my position, my gender. And throughout my career, everybody that I worked with never, you know, that was never an issue on site at the winery. It was always an issue outside of the winery with either people, you know, it, with retailers or customers or, you know, friends, to tell you the truth. Um, but I never, I never even thought about it. I just, you know, concentrated on learning winemaking, being part of the team, worked with great people. I mean, I can't even tell you how uh, grateful I am to the people that I work with. And, and throughout, you know, even now, the most important thing is the people that you work with and, you know, to build on what all of you have said, the learning, the sharing of information, the camaraderie. I mean, you know, I just feel so lucky that we've been a part of that. And especially here in Santa Barbara County, I just feel like, you know, we're still overall in that pioneering stage and everybody relies on each other for friendship, for knowledge, for borrowing of equipment, supplies or whatever. It's not snooty, it's comfortable, it's relaxed. And honestly, that's the only way it should be, especially in our industry. We sell, we make a, a product that we celebrate with. And so we should be open, honest, and caring of each other. Man, you're selling that Santa Barbara County. Absolutely. That. <laughs> no, I love it. The, the vibe, you know, I've, I've worked harvest all over the place and even with me. <laughs> yeah, even, yeah, two of you. <laughs> um, but the vibe in in Santa Barbara County, it's just, it's unique. It's definitely unique, and especially amongst the, the women. Um, so we've all spoken to how grateful we are for uh, this industry and everything. Uh, Karen, you want to talk a little bit about challenges that still, that you encounter? Uh, I, I'm just going to echo what Denise said. Like, I don't feel, I mean, there are these funny things, right, that always happen when um, people come to the winery and ask if I could get somebody to drive the forklift. Um, but it really, 
<laughs> and you go like, you no, know, I don't know anybody who could drive a forklift. Um, I do think I'm the only graduate of Pepperdine Business School that has a forklift driving license. But um, um, challenges like in production, uh, you know, we can all talk to each other. Uh, there, I don't. I mean, other than you know, our our our, our other challenges here in Santa Barbara County, labor and um, water and things like that. But as Denise says, when you get out into the marketplace, it's a, it's a different kind of thing. And, um, and, and I mean, there's always a surprise, which is surprising, right? When you go and you're just like, you're gonna do something like, oh, you're the winemaker. I'm like, oh, you're the winemaker. I'm like, yeah, I'm the winemaker. And, and I think a lot of that is going to change because I think a lot of this pandemic is going to change a lot of paradigms, right? But I, you know, you, some of these snooty psalms sometimes were just like, what rock have you been under? I mean, like, there are women in almost, like, I can't think of what there's not, but certainly there are women winemakers. And then, you know, that's kind of the challenge. But um, I mean, the challenges right now are just all sales, sales, things like that. <laughs> Right. I don't know. It's not, it's, I mean, it, it, like, I guess it's the same thing. I just never, I just never assumed that there would be any kind of glass ceiling barriers in anything I've ever done. And, and therefore, you know, I, I didn't think I ran into anything, but every once in a while, there's still kind of this funny little, like, Hmm, that was, that was like, that wasn't something you should still hear. You should have heard that. Shouldn't have heard it ever, but it, is, you know, it still happens once in a while, which is just, Shocking and surprising. I can't yeah. drive a few. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> although Kathy fills up her own propane tanks, and I don't do that. <laughs> no, no, I, so no, I bring them to be filled up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I fill yeah. propane tanks, so I can, I can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. am I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all have some funny experiences of kind of. Uh, Dealing with uh, perspectives, maybe from from people in the winery or out in the market. I know that for me, when I went to work in, I was in Argentina. Um, it's a bit. We're a little bit more forward thinking there uh, than than Mendoza. Uh, I remember I was not really allowed to carry buckets full of liquid anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, an interesting thing. They always wanted to jump in and help me. Um, but uh, Kathy, you want to share maybe a little fun anecdote yeah. of an experience? Well, I just want to, uh, yeah, I, I think I want to expand a little bit um, because I had great learning experience working in the cellar at Joseph Phelps. You know, it's the guys who had been there for 30 years that taught me how to hook up pumps and transfer wine and and um, be relaxed about um, the environment and get the job done. I mean, it was amazing. Um, but I, I'm going to take it to a little different level because um, I have to, in, in my business, um, it's small, it's ambitious, but... I have so much I have to deal with. I have to deal with the accounting and the trademark law and the employment law. And I have to make great wine and I have to monitor the stages in the vineyard and should we turn on our wind machines today or not. And, and, um, and, and you know, my huge challenges are dividing my time so that um, I can be successful, um, you know, to the end, which is, making great wine and sharing it and, 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 you know, bringing it to the table. And, and so um, I'm always challenged by how to divide my time and what to farm out and what I can afford to farm out, you know, that, and so, yep, sales, sales, sales. Thank you, Karen, for, you know, she, you know, she helped me a lot with, um, marketing you know one customer at a time i'll never forget that you know i'm um it's it's a challenge in trying to um you know you have a great vision your wines are great 
and you just have to bring it to the customer and you need recognition and and how do you get that and for me that is my personal challenge um and 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 expanding that a little bit i know the pandemic is creating a whole different environment and and what people are buying has changed and i'm um as a vineyard owner who who um is is sustainably certified um i know that i want to commit to sustainability but my customers are demanding low cost wine so how do you make low cost wines that are elegant that are place driven that um that um are passionate that are true to your you know your heart and soul um that that is going to give you broad exposure and in a customer base and so um my challenge isn't as a woman my challenge is a business owner and as a, a, a it includes being a winemaker um and i i like the, i bring the challenge on myself you know and uh it's it's the joy in what i do um it's um when i get in trouble i can call on um, my comrades in crime but um the reality is this is um it's a ton of fun and it's very personal and uh but um making it happen is a 24 7 job for me and that's what i do it's it's just me yeah thank you um yeah you kind of touched on uh things you know the projections of uh where things are going you know you you mentioned sustainability which everyone who's watching stay tuned because part of our series here um next friday we're going to be talking about abas okay so we're going to be uh diving deeper into the microclimates of the region um and then the following week, we'll be going into sustainability. We'll be talking about um, organic, biodynamic, uh, sustainable farming. So I think we can all agree that uh, that's needed in as we grow towards a, a better future. You know, we're all focusing on that in um, in many different ways. And then the final. Wait, 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 wait. I just wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then the final um, tasting of the month, we're going to be talking about um, alternative varietals. So we're going to be getting into some geeky things that uh, people are doing in the industry. What were you going to say, Kathy? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say that uh, on sustainability, um, you know, it isn't a challenge to be sustainable. It's it's a challenge to be sustainable and offer wines at a at the low cost. Um, um, because I think, um, you know, those those hidden costs are difficult to promote. Um, why wines are more expensive than other wines, and um, uh, it, it it's a uh, it, you know, you want to show off why I, I want to show off why my vineyard is special, why Fiddlesticks Vineyard is special, and how the sustainability is not only visual but expands to education programs and water usage and things that we don't usually talk about, but it's huge. Um, and I want people who buy my wine to appreciate my commitment to the, that detail, that level of detail. Totally. It's interesting, but Sarah, that all all four of us here are uh, very involved with vineyards as well as um, yeah. that was actually that was going to be my next thing about where we see our roles as women uh, heading in the future. And I think Karen, you mentioned that you're you're seeing that right more women in the field. Does yeah. anybody, does anybody want to comment on that? More women in the field, and also you know, being there to mentor and to guide, you know, like the younger generation because they are the future as well. And um, just empowering each other. I, I think that's that's super important. And, um, you know, for me, like I'm taking, I, I'm this year joining all these 
mentorship programs where, where I'm going to be mentoring students. And so um, uh, I'm definitely going to have my hands full, but, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I strongly believe in that. Um, you know, I know I, I didn't have that when I first entered into the wine industry and I don't want everyone else to go through what I went through, um, you know, just not having a, a resource um, when I first entered in. So um, it's been a support group for, for everyone else. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Denise, you want to comment on that? Like where where women are expanding into the future? Yeah, I mean, you know, something that I think we're seeing right here with everybody on this, you know, call is the passion that and just the total commitment that we all put into our jobs and have put into our career. And it's not just a job, um, it's a way of life, like Kathy said, 24 seven. And that's the beauty of it too. And, you know, mentoring, I agree, is, is, is super important. And just supporting people who have that desire and passion further it along, you know, it's going to get you places. It's going to make your life beautiful, you know, I mean, it and fulfilling. And in this day and age, you know, there's so much going on. You have to be doing what you're happy doing. And um, I think, you know, just for your overall well-being, it's super important. And sustainability is a, a big part of that. It's a big part of, you know, not only the way we farm and the way we produce wine, but the way we live our lives at home too. And with our sustainability programs that we've, you know, instilled at the winery, it's just become part of the routine and innate. And I think going forward, um, that's that's going to be so much of what we're going to have to uh, just expand and grow into. And um, you know, there's no going backwards. Totally. No going backwards. Karen, you want to have some final thoughts here? Well, and, and that's a hard thing to KJ's point here. KJ, that Kathy, mm -hmm. KJ, Denise. Um, <laughs> um, My name came first. Let me just make that clear. Um, by the way, even today, even today, Kathy, people keep calling me Kathy. So, like, you know, my younger sister is Kathy, and my mother would just like, oh, Karen, Kathy, Kelly, whatever. And then I think because when I worked with Kathy at Fiddlehead, and we both have curly hair, and we're of the same age, it would get us confused. So now I've been at Buttonwood since 2007, and people still call me Kathy. <laughs> I, Iris Rideau called me Kathy last week in the grocery store. So uh, anyway, <laughs> it's very hard to say, you know, the... How how you how you get somebody to understand that the cost of sequestering carbon by doing no-till cover crops goes into the cost of the bottle, right? I mean that is right. That is something that you know all of us, including the wine institute that I work with pretty closely, is trying to figure out and how to how to make people understand what this big thing called sustainability is because it's not just farming; it's also you know, our community relations, which is what we did as a women's group giving back to the food bank last year, um, $10,000 we gave to the food bank from, uh, from our event last year. Um, it's, it's your financial sustainability, right? So you can continue to support yourself and your employees. And we've, we've all kind of had to deal with that this year with like, how do we almost make work to keep people employed as we try to get our businesses going again, which was you know exhausting and um, but what we want to do also is, um, Santa Barbara County is one of the most unique wine growing regions in the world. It, it simply is, and if it's just because of its geography, that's one thing, but it is because we have an awful lot of unique people here. Um, I, uh, I have a talk the other day saying it was somebody and they're just like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of hard to, hard to wrangle you people. I'm like, well, because we're all alpha. I said, it's kind of like, you know, trying to herd a bunch of Jack Russell Terriers. I mean, you just, you just can't do it, right? So, um, but, but all those things make this, particularly for um, Southern California, I want Southern California to understand that we are their wine region, right? I want them to stop just driving right by, uh, no offense to Paso Robles, but um, 
stop and taste what we're trying to do and get to know us because, oh, we're fascinating. <laughs> Absolutely. <It's fun. laughs> if only we think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so i i love this i love where this conversation is heading because i think women as women we are the links to fixing a lot of the um issues that we're facing really that have come to light in 2020 and 2021 whether it's environmental social economic you know we we really are the changing factor, right? We we learn and put ourselves there and we get things done. I think that we can all agree on. <laughs> we get things done. That, huh? I said, yes, we get things done. We get things done. And so that's why we wanna celebrate each other this month. I mean, we wanna celebrate each other all the time, but we have this special month for ourselves. And so we're gonna continue the conversation all month. Uh, like I said, next week, we're going to be talking about the AVAs. So you can learn more about this interesting spot on the Central Coast. Um, then that's going to be, let me pull up my calendar. That's going to be Friday the 12th at 530. Um, then the following week is going to be our sustainability chat. So we've gotten a little taste of it here. Uh, but we're really going to be diving deep into it on the 19th again at 530. And then we're going to close out our Women's History Month events on the 26th. And that's going to be with our um, alternate varietals. Okay, to kind of talking about some unique things that are going on in the area and in the bottles. Um, let's see what else. We have all of our wineries are doing special deals. So if you want to get some great wines delivered directly to your house, check out uh, the links in the descriptions of these videos, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're streaming this and grab yourself as much wine as you'd like, <laughs> right? As much as you can handle. <laughs> um, Great. I think that's everything, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, coming together. And um, let's just keep making changes. Keep it going. <laughs> cheers. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, cheers. Cheers to you all. <laughs> cheers. I'm guessing that's kombucha. <laughs> awesome. yes, I miss, I miss you all. Yeah, I know we'll all. be able to do this live next yeah. week. Yeah. No, we're, we're all getting vaccinated. We were supposed to have our party. <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe we can have maybe we can have a halfway to International Women's Day party. There you go. I like it. See? So, action this is it's getting the yeah. ball rolling <laughs> wait a minute oh. you're suggesting in september you want to have another <laughs> maybe we could do it uh halfway and a half <laughs> we'll do it at fiddle sticks there you go well, that's all everyone is always welcome that is uh amazing well, nice size, and i can't say no to that well, and then if you're out there harvesting, doing something, we'll just work around you. Yeah, especially if you're planning it, I will make sure the venue is extraordinary. Got so it. it's worth a visit, for sure. It is. Ladies, all right, thank you, you are all Sarah. Thank you. Thank and you. I most respect for all of you. It's really oh. tremendous to uh, be in this together. Yeah. So cheers. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers, all right. We're going out. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.